we are in Ohio. Just arrived in Nebraska, Georgetown, Colorado, eating snow, Utah, Arizona. Welcome to Vegas in your new home. Hey guys, in case you haven't been here in a while, my family and I just moved across the country from New Jersey to California, and that included this lovely girl over here, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix is nine years old. She's also epileptic, so I really didn't want to risk flying her over here and having her ride in the cargo hold. Since she's over 22 pounds, she's basically too big to ride in the cabin with me in a plane unless I was taking a private jet, and that costs a lot of dollars. So we opted for driving her across the country. The trip itself was about 2,800 miles from our old house to this house we're in right now, and when my husband mapped it in the GPS the first time they set out, it said it would take about 40 hours. So maybe you're not moving across the country. Maybe you're just taking a really, really long road trip. But here are five tips that really helped us and hopefully they can help you too. Number one, make sure your dog has enough comfortable space that they could be in for prolonged periods of time. I like to think about it this way. You're not trying to have this feel like a crate experience for 40 hours. So you kind of want to give your dog a bit more space than that. Lay down some blankets and some soft towels so that they have something nice and soft and warm to lay on that isn't like the cold floor of your car. And they should be able to stand, sit, lay down, turn around comfortably, and maybe even lay down in different spots so they're not just stuck in that same spot the whole time. Phoenix traveled here in a Ford F-150 with an extended cab, so she had the entire back row to herself. Mike put all the seats up and he put towels down so that she had something nice to lay on. And she basically slept most of the time, so you do want to make sure that the space is comfortable. I've seen a lot of people put the back seats down in their cars and lay some towels down. Whatever it is, as long as your dog has enough comfort comfortable space to lounge in, this will be a much better experience for them. Number two, bring water, but bring lots of extra water. We normally just keep an extra gallon jug of water in Mike's car anyway for the times that Phoenix is in there, but this really came in handy for this trip. Because they ran into car trouble, they were able to just have extra water for Phoenix and basically didn't run out for the entire time that they were waiting for the car to get fixed. The last thing you want to do is be stuck somewhere and not have enough water for your dog who is very thirsty. We kept a bowl out the entire time for her and it was pretty stable in the back of the car so the water didn't really spill that much and Phoenix was fine drinking out of it. But they do sell travel bowls with really like tall walls that like curl over like this so that the bowl can jostle around in the back of your car and it still won't spill water. Up to you if you guys want to use that. We didn't end up having to use it but it's a good option. Number three, try to stick to their normal schedule as much as you can. For this trip, we had a time difference of three hours, but it's advisable to stick to the schedule that your dog is used to, and then when they get to their destination, start to gradually change to the time difference. If your dogs go to the bathroom at the same time every day, try to stick to them going to the bathroom at the same time during these trips. If they eat dinner at the same time every day, do the same thing. Dogs like schedules, and it can be comforting to have something that they know is always gonna happen at the same time, especially during a trip like this that could be really Really stressful. Number four, get out and stretch your legs as much as you can. A lot of rest areas have pet relief areas that are just grass that your pet can go to the bathroom on, but run them around. They're gonna have a lot of pent up energy from just sitting in the car. Run them around, run with them. It might be helpful for you to stretch your legs too. It may be tempting to just get back in the car and get on with your trip, but even just taking five to 10 minutes to just run them around could really help them expend their pent up energy. Mike even found this cool rest stop that had a dog run. So we found a miniature dog car. And number five, if your dog gets car sick or really has high anxiety in the car, you may want to consider a different option. There's no getting around it. Dogs that just aren't good in the car, they're not going to be good for a really long trip like this. We were very lucky in the fact that Phoenix is amazing in the car, but our late dog Falcon would get sick half an hour into any trip. If she were still around, we definitely wouldn't have been driving them across the country, but Phoenix is a pro. Is that right? We never would have made the choice to drive Falcon across 
the country because she would have been miserable. Really think about how your dog is gonna feel on this trip. It may not be for everybody, but hopefully some of these tips help. Are any of you guys gonna go on a long trip anytime soon? Let me know what tips and tricks you have for long car rides with your dogs. I'm always willing to learn new things and it'd be fun to share with the rest of the subwoofers. Also let me know in the comment section below any fun car stories you have with your dogs. I love hearing all your dog stories. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post new things every Wednesday. You can tap on that little circle with my face in it to subscribe. If you wanna see my last video, you can go here. And if you wanna check out my vlog channel, you can go down there. And now that we're at the end of this video, it's time for This Is A Pillow. All right, it's been real, see you guys next week. Bye! You're the worst! Okay, you're fine, I'm sorry, I didn't mean